Welcome to Paradigm Conversations. I am your host, Quinina Centeno, and I am so grateful to have you join me as we seek to grow in God. Set your notifications and let's dive in. Hey everyone, so here's another Paradigm Conversation for us today. This particular subject is a little bit touchy. I've been sitting with this for maybe a week or two now um, but it is a conversation that comes up quite often uh, not only between me and God but with other people in ministry you know friends and just those I interact with on a daily basis so I decided that it might be best to just go ahead and share this one today you know share a few of my thoughts share a few things that I believe that God has spoken to me about concerning this subject. So nonetheless, the subject today is about prophets and not just um, regular, what we see as being prophets, but false prophets in particularly. Okay. So in, in the arena, you know, we, well, in Christendom, we seem to kind of throw that label on being a prophet around. There are some people who self-proclaim themselves to be prophets. There are those who God is truly called to be prophets. And then there are those who people call others a prophet, even though that person may not have acknowledged being a prophet because they see a particular gifting. So sometimes we confuse the gift of prophecy with the office and so and then even when there is the office present we still have false prophets that are you know perpetrating that are presenting themselves to be something authentic but hopefully today after hearing this you'll be able to kind of pinpoint to see um, what could be real and what could be fake so of course, we're going to go through the scriptures. We're going to use the word of God. We're going to kind of just take our time with this today because it is such an important subject. And I wanted to do this because I don't want people to continue to be deceived. And I don't want people to continue to lose money. I don't want people to be led astray because, you know, um, having the wrong voice in your life and obeying the wrong voice can ultimately lead to destruction you know and there are different types of prophets you know we have the seeing prophets we have the um, major prophets minor prophets we have prophets who are writers and you know it's just different and on the flip side there are also in the um, I guess in the discipline of false prophets I don't want to call it discipline but uh, in that category, there's, you know, prophets of Baal, Jezebel have prophets. Um, so, you know, and and Satan himself has those particular rep- representatives. They all under operate under demonic influence, all false prophets. And so their origin, their root, of course, is uh, demonic. You know, and it, even though it may present itself as being um, beneficial or meaning you well, in the end it's not. It's usually some type of self-gain around that. There's, at the root of it, is some type of um, self-grandizement, self-benefit for that particular prophet and not necessarily for you. So, the scripture, let's, let's just use the word. We, we're Christians, right? So we believe the word of God to be true. And so since we believe the word of God to be true, then let's go ahead and dive into that. So I'm coming from Ephesians 4, 11 11 through 16. I'm going to read it pretty quickly. And he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry or the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man 
to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we should not, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro from carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of disciple plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him, Christ, who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Okay, so when we got to this scripture, we realized that this is the entire purpose. This is the purpose of your pastor. This is the purpose of your evangelist. This is the purpose of the apostles. I know we try to make it look as though apostles are just supposed to build churches. No, that's not it. That's not all of it. Um, this is for the pastors. Pastors have this same assignment. And teachers, we don't really give highlight to teachers. When here, the scripture puts them all in the same category. And it, it lists all of them. But their their objective, their purpose, their essence, their assignment is for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. And what that mean is, their, that prophetic word that you receive from a true prophet should equip you in some manner. Now, all of these have a, all all five four ministry gifts. All of these gifts have a different way of administering, or a different way of ministering to you by way of the Holy Spirit. They all have different functions. They all minister in a different way. But at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, it's for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. That is to build you up so that you can be a light to others. It's to uh, teach you, to grow you, to groom you, to develop you, to help you, to encourage you, to lift you up, not to tear you down. It says for the edifying of the body of Christ. And that as you begin to do work in the ministry, as you begin to minister to others, as you begin to share Christ with others as you begin to lead others to the love of God and as you begin to love on others and help the poor and help the needy now you're edifying the body of Christ the entire body of Christ is becoming elevated because though that prophet I'm going to speak specifically about prophets but because that prophet has done their job in equipping the saints Okay, and it says till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So you should receive knowledge. You receive you should receive information. True prophets give these types this this is the the mandate of a true prophet, okay? I'm telling you you was true so we can get into what's fake. And so as we continue on that, it's it's to Basically, it's to enhance your life. So, if you're in the presence of a prophet, when you leave the presence of that prophet, your life has been enhanced in some way. Even if they brought correction to your life, even if the conversation was a difficult conversation, even if, you know, as I said, correction, even if it was a rebuke, that rebuke was for your benefit. And so, you will walk away with a greater knowledge you will walk away with better faith you will walk away with an equipping because now you're no longer being deceived by the enemy the voice of the prophet is supposed to come that's why they're able to see into your lives and be able to discern discernment comes with a prophetic gift so they should be able to discern what's going in what's going on around you and what's hindering you so that you can come out of that. They don't need to just discern you for your name. Like telling you your name is not equipping you for what for what God has called you to do. He's already made your name great. So you don't necessarily need a prophet to tell you your name. 
that doesn't make them um, valid. That doesn't make their ministry valid just because they've called your name. Now, do true. Can God give a true prophet your name? Absolutely. But that's not what they're there for. What they're there for, what God sends a prophet into your life for, is to equip you, to give you knowledge, to ignite your faith, to set you into the right direction, to point you into the direct direction, right direction, to uh, groom you, to correct you, to build you, okay? Jeremiah 14 and 15 says, Now this is how we understand God's feelings towards false prophets. Okay? Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who prophesied by name, whom I did not send, and who say, Sworn and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine, those prophets shall be consumed. So, there, we're coming into a time where false prophets will begin to eat those same words that they put out uh, falsely. And the way we recognize um, what false prophets are or who they are, it's also in Deuteronomy 18, verse 18 to 22. It says, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren. Number one, prophets are called out, okay? And will put my words in his mouth. So the word of God has to be in the mouth of the prophet. Whoever it is that is prophesying into your life, the word of God has to be in their mouth. And it says that he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet has not spoken. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that thing which the Lord has not spoken, the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. You shall not honor that individual. If there's someone who speaks a prophetic word in 24 hours, this is going to happen. If that thing doesn't happen, it wasn't spoken by God. It was spoken presumptuously. So you are not to honor that individual. Don't continue to sit in the presence of that particular individual because the word that they're spoken was spoken presumptuously. It was spoken out of their own emotions. It was spoken not from the word of God. It was not a direct rhema word of God. It had no exousia or dunamis power attached to it. It had no power, no power attached to it to do. There was no anointing attached to it to make things happen. And so, um, you know, God speaks clearly about how he feels about false prophets. Um, even in Jeremiah 23, uh, verse 25, it says, I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? You know, be careful when they tell you they have dreams and there's no proof behind it. There's no, there's no validity to that. It says, indeed, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart who try to make my people forget my name. And they do that because they're trying to build a name for themselves. It says, by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbor, as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. But God it says, the prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he who has my word let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, who steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, who use their tongues and say, he says, behold, 
I am against those who prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness. So basically, what this is saying, and we're just walking through the word, y'all, because this is a paradigm conversation. So basically, what we're saying in this is that um, God is really angered by false prophets who um, lie about dreams that they've had to build their own names. This whole entire thing is to build another name. And when you receive a prophecy, the prophetic word is only to build the name of the Lord when it's genuine. It's not to build that, that prophet's name. It's not to build your name. It's only to build the name of the Lord through the word of God. And here we hear that the word of God is more powerful than any other word. So speaking the word of God is when the wheat is next to the tear. And so when he says that the wheat grow with the tear, with the shaft, the shaft of the wheat, wheat has substance. Shaft floats away. Shaft has no weight. But wheat always has weight. And so, if you receive a prophetic word that has no weight, it is chaffed. It is chaff. C-H-A-F-F. Chaff. And let's keep going. It says, and yet I did not send them or command them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, says the Lord. So when these people or the prophet or the priest ask you, saying, what is the oracle of the Lord? You shall then say to them, What oracle? I will even forsake you, says the Lord. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people who say the oracle of the Lord, I will punish that man and his house. So y'all ever hear people say, You know, well, if I be a woman of God and I be a man of God, and they say, Oh, thus says the Lord. If those individuals are lying, God will punish them. If it is not what God has said, and if it's not of the oracles of God, He He will punish them. So you don't need to you don't need to uh fret that. But not only will He punish them, but He'll also punish their house. So be careful. And if you're out there trying to operate in the prophetic and you're out there lying, only you know that you're lying other than after if that thing does not come to pass but you know your heart you know if you're being deceitful you know if you're lying so if you are lying you might want to be careful because your whole house will come under the punishment of God that means your children that means your 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 uh, place of employment and, and your money is affected your business could be affected if you have a business. You can cause yourself to enter into to lack. And then you have to do more lies and more lies to try to get the people to give to you. Because you put yourself under the punishment of God. It says, beware of false prophets in Matthew chapter 7. This is the New Testament, y'all. This is Jesus speaking. Beware of false prophets. Who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? <laughs> I thought that was funny. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. So in this instance, when Jesus is speaking, he was asked that he was having the conversation on how to identify false prophets. And the tell, tell sign, the most undeniable way to identify a false prophet is by their fruit. 
because you cannot bake fruit. You can't bake fruit. You can't fake the anointing. Now, you may be able to pretend like it is an anointing, but you can't fake it because at the end of the day, no one walks away healed. At the end of the day, no one walks away delivered. They walk away with the same demons that they came with. They walk away bound with the same proclivities and the same sin that they came with. The only thing a lot of people I see leave with is less money, unfortunately. Less peace. They leave with more drama than they have when they enter the presence of false prophets because there's a false hope given. And the, also another way is to, the reason, the way you can really, really see when something is fake, you know, I'm a woman, so I love purses. So if you, if you put a Louis Vuitton bag that's real or a Brahmin bag that's real next to a fake Louis Vuitton or a fake Brahmin bag, you'll be able to tell the difference between the two. The textures are different. The feel is different. The design is different. The longevity is different. You know, with the Louis Vuitton, it lasts for years and years and years. A fake one, it can't last that long. So false prophets don't usually last long. They can't last long. They have nothing to stand on. There's no real substance. But true prophets can last for ages. Because there's truth. Truth always stands. Truth always outweighs a lie. So y'all be careful with the fruit. Are they living one way and saying something else? And I don't mean that no one has flaws. Everyone has flaws. But are you living a completely different life? If you're in their presence naturally sometimes, if they're continuously cursing, they're conti their mouths are filthy, their thoughts are filthy, how can clean and dirty water come out of the same fountain? So you might want to check that. Be, be very, pay attention. Pay attention to the lives, the lifestyle outside of the group gathering, outside of the assembly. Pay attention to the fruit. Are there children walking with God? And I don't mean children don't go astray. What I, what I mean is, do their children respect their anointing? A lot of times you can, you can look at family members and tell if a person is really genuine or not. That's, you know, of course the family members who aren't jealous. But, you know, or in general, even the ones that are jealous, there's all, there'll always be a little bit to where they be like, no, nah, I'm not going to really mess with him too much because I know he's really real. They'll tell you. You can look and see. But pay attention. Don't be, don't be just led astray by these individuals. Um, and let, the last scripture, we're going to go to Acts. It says, When Simon saw that the apostles by merely laying on hands conferred the spirit this is Acts 8 verse 18 y'all he pulled out his money excited and said sell me your secret show me how you did that how much do you want name your price Peter said to hell with your money and you along with it why that's unthinkable trying to buy God's gift. You'll never be part of what a God is doing by striking bargains and offering bribes. Change your ways and now ask the master to forgive you for trying to use God to make money. I can see this is an old habit with you. You reek with money lust. Now, another sign is the money lust. For false prophets to think that we can purchase a blessing or to think that we can buy a particular thing you know that we can buy the anointing or that we can buy grace or buy blessing is a real error 
It's, it's real true error. You cannot buy the gifts of God. There is no way. The gifts of God are given freely. They're not bought and they cannot be sold. So, you one of your another way to know you're in the presence of a false prophet is if you if you're being coerced to pay for what God has already given you freely. He's already giving it to you. He said, Acts of the Holy Spirit and I will give you him freely. He said, Acts, and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Right? He said, the righteous shall abound in blessings. He said, call upon the name of the Lord and I will answer you. He said, the prayers of the righteous avail much and makes tremendous power available unto you. You don't have to pay what God has already given you. He said, daily shall I load you with benefits. You don't need an individual to tell you that you're blessed. You don't need an individual to tell you or to give you a blessing. God has already given that to you. You just have to receive it. And by faith, operate in it. Walk in it. Accept it. Now, yes, can do you give offerings to prophets? Absolutely. You do so under the, the anointing. But what I'm talking about is the coercion. It's the, y'all been in those settings to where, um, you know, you're kind of begged or you're required or you're almost kind of, in a sense, bullied into giving. That's not God. That's not God. When you really feel the Holy Spirit moving, when you really feel the presence of God, it should already ex it ignite a giving in you to where you shouldn't even have to be asked to give. When the true presence of God shows up, when a prophetic word truly goes forth, it's going forth to bless you. So that's the reason why you give. You give out of a thank you. You give not because you're trying to receive. You give because you have received. And now out of gratefulness, God, I thank you for what I received. So here is my offering. So that's one another way to identify false prophets. And lastly, God is a spirit. God is not an energy. God is not an aura. God is not Mother Nature. God is not a being. God is a spirit. And God is love. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if there's anything that is outside of the truth of the word of God. First y'all really you got to learn the word of God. Because if, if you don't know the word of God. You can't tell if it's the truth of God. You can't discern that. And how can a prophet give you the word of God when he doesn't even speak or she doesn't even speak to God? When they have no truth in themselves, when they're teaching things that don't line up with the word of God, God is not an energy. God is a spirit. God is a spirit and God is love. So if it's not in the spirit of truth, if it's not in love, it's not God. It doesn't matter who says it. It doesn't matter what title they have. You know, they can call themselves a prophet all they want. And yes, they may be a prophet. They may be a prophet of Baal. They can be a prophet of Beelzebub. They can be a prophet of Jezebel. They can, be, they can be another type of prophet. They can be a false prophet. They can be a prophet of the universe. They can be any kind of prophet they want. But the prophet of the true and the living God. The father of Jesus Christ. The member of the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The prophet that belongs to the kingdom of heaven. Operates in spirit. 
which means they don't operate out of tradition. They don't have all these religious sectors where you got to wear this and you got to wear that. And if you put on white, then, you know, God is going to speak to you. No, that's a bunch of malarkey. Spirit is not about what you have on. Spirit is not about what you do physically. Spirit is spirit. Spirit is internal. Spirit is the nature of who you are, the essence. Spirit and in truth. Through love. It's all about love. That's why the fruit of the Spirit is all the greatest is love. Amen. And this concludes our paradigm conversation for today. I am your host, Quinina Sensino. Thank you for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. I, I pray it was a blessing to you as well. If you would, just go ahead and click the like, share, subscribe, or follow button, depending on the type of media that you are tuning in from. Thank you for being a part of the community of Paradigm Conversations. Have a wonderfully blessed and amazing day.